Hi there, YouTubers and weavers again. Starting another project. I've got uh, the warp measured out, wound onto the back of the loom. I'm sitting here in front of the loom now, and I'm going to start um, threading all the heddles. That's a long, slow process, isn't it? Anyways, so this process, or this project, will be another one of my attempts at a variation on one of Jane Stafford's recent lessons. This is her uh, Season 5 Lesson 4 Huck Color and Weave Lesson. Now, you know I can't leave well enough alone. I've got to change it to be my own, not just what she did. So I'm going to list for you a couple of the things I've changed. Number one, she made hers narrower so that people with smaller looms could still do it. Great idea, but I've got a spring loom that's 42 inches wide, and while I'm not going to do the full 42, I am going from, I believe hers was 15 inches, I'm going up to just over 25 inches. Um, she used 8-2 cotton. I don't have a lot of 8-2 cotton, but I do have a fair stash of 8-2 cotton and I prefer working with cotton, so I'm using cotton. Her colors were white and black and kind of a light green. I don't remember the exact name of it, but who cares? My colors will be white and navy blue and orange. So the navy blue, it replaces the black. Why? Well, because I have a couple of spools of navy blue sitting in the stash, and I only have just a little teeny amount of uh, black. So <laughs> the contrast will still be there. I didn't have a light green that matched, and I thought, well, you know, what have I got that's not a real dark color, but not a real light color either. And the orange that I found is just about the right shade of variation. I think it'll work out nice to give the borders between the uh, sections because this is a gamp. The other thing I'm changing, um, in her threading for this lesson, she puts her tabby on shafts one and four. Again, for the way she's teaching, that's an excellent idea. The problem that I have with it is, on my loom I've got my uh, shafts set up that I have more heddles on shafts one and two than I do on any other shaft. Um, I don't remember the exact number. I think I go down, it's like 200 heddles each on shafts one and two, then um, 150 on shafts two, three, four, and five, and then down to I think it's a hundred on all the rest. So to do this the way she wanted it, I would have had to move a bunch of heddles. And certainly that is doable. But I thought it would be much easier to use the shaft shuffler feature in um, Fiberworks PCW to just rearrange the shafts. So what she had put on shaft four, I'm putting on shaft two. Shaft one is staying as it was in her design. What she had on shaft two, I've moved to three, and what she had on three, I've moved to four. So I'm still only using four shafts, but they're arranged differently to save myself having to move any uh, heddles to a different shaft. So I'm going to move the camera in just a second. I'm just, just barely beginning. I have not threaded a single thread through the heddles yet. We're going to start that. I'll show you the very, very, very beginning of that, like three or four threads. Then I'm going to turn the camera off and just plow through it and get this done. So here's my um, notes for the threading. I printed this. I used both Fiberworks 
PCW and Tempo Weave to do this. I did most of it in Tempo Weave. I've gotten so I really like that program. But one thing Tempo Weave does not have is the ability to move um, to to do the shaft shuffling of the uh, shafts that uh, Fiberworks does. Or if if Tempo Weave does have it. I don't know where it is in there. I've looked. I can't find it. Uh, maybe, maybe Barry or uh, Dawn could tell me at some point in time. But anyways, here's. Oh, we need to get that in the light. Maybe I can zoom in. There's what I'm doing. So I'm going to start here and go across that way. And. Follow this up. So the first block, I changed the, the number of threads obviously because I've, I'm doing more. So I've got um, 10 orange and the guess can be plain weave. So let's count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on shaft 1 and 5 on shaft 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Bring them over here, get this out of the way. And then let's uh, grab a couple of threads. I know when uh, Jane showed this on season one, she threads a lot faster than I do. I admit I'm really a putz at going slow with this. But, um, I don't think it matters. I mean, as long as you get it done, who cares how fast you go? And I just don't feel comfortable going through multiple heddles at a time the way she did it. Granted, her way is faster. But um, mine gets the job done. So we'll go back here and grab a cup, grab another thread. And as you can see, I'm not real fast, but hey, it works. Okay, there's four threads. I don't want to bore you to death with watching this. Bad enough, I have to bore me to death. I hope you can see this, folks. I'm um, still working on... Um, Threading the heddles for this color and weave huck gamp. I'm going very slowly with it. I admit that I am not fast. I don't know if you're at the right angle. I think you're probably hitting my shoulder. Let's move that. Yeah, there we are. So Right now I'm doing a small batch of seven threads. Four of them are going to be on shaft one and three of them are going to be on shaft three. And in this batch of seven threads, in this section what I'm doing is I'm doing the outside thread in blue. And I'll do five whites and then another blue. This is, um, okay, see, I'm not real fast with this. I've caught myself at one mistake already. It was a mistake made when I was measuring out the threads. I missed one thread, so I had to add, um, what I did was I just took a chunk of white thread measured out a little bit over six yards of it and hung it off the back of the loom, threaded it through as if it had been wound onto the back beam even though it wasn't, and it will be weighted and go on that way. What have I done here? Yep, this one goes next. So it'll be there, it just um, Mm 
won't be on the back beam. It'll I'll have to every about every second time that I advance my warp when I get to actually weaving, I'll have to go back and move the weight so that uh, it will be them, but it, it'll make it work. I prefer that method to, to trying to completely unwind the back beam and having a boatload of um, a boatload of extra front threads around winding all over the place. So there's one more little batch. Let's move that out of the way and make notes of what I've done. That was on shaft one. So I'll show you this in just a second. Gonna look terrible, but um, there's where I am. Everything that is colored, I have done. Everything that is not colored, that's in just white so far, is not done. And there's a little bit more on the second page. I'll show you that in just a second. Just that little bit. Whoops. So, I'm being very careful about if the A block, I'm noting that I did it in yellow. The B block, I'm noting that I did it in pink. The orange threads, I'm noting that I did it in orange. And I put a blue mark every time I do 20 threads, because that's an inch. And then I tie them off in just a little slip knot and have them hanging there with an S hook. So, being very methodical about threading this thing you can kinda see I'm having a hard time moving this because I'm sitting in front of the camera and it's showing me the picture upside down so it's confusing but you get the idea you'll see it right side up of what I'm doing here very slowly keeping track of because I have both A block B block changes and color changes the black representing the blue and the white representing the white. Um, I have to be real careful. That's why this is taking me as long as it is. I'm going really slow. So that was an A block that I just did. I'm going to count out another seven heddles. One, two, three, four. Move them over into my area there. Whoops. See, I almost did the wrong ones. Two, three, four. This is a B block. One, two, three. Okay. Now I'll go back and get seven more threads. And we'll start um, pulling them through the heddles. I think you can see this. I hope I've got the camera zoomed in enough that you can actually see what I'm doing. But I just thought I'd show you how slow I am, and yet I'm trying to be really careful. I do, this would be an easy pattern to screw up, so I'd rather be slow than screw up the threading, because once the threading is done, yeah, I know you can untie it and undo it and rethread, but that's a lot slower than taking it slow and carefully to do it right the first time. So that's the method that I'm choosing to go really slow, check myself on a regular basis every couple of threads. And um, get this right. One more little batch done. 
that was a B, so I'm gonna. Come on, thing. So we'll go on here and mark it this way. And now I've got a 1 3, and then I can tie off. So we'll grab some A block. Dark one in first. Then the light one will go next. And that makes 20 threads in this group right here. So I like to just give it a comb to be sure everything's out to the front properly. And now we'll see, and one of them's not. We'll Pull that down and we'll just put a little slip loop in there and I've just been hanging S hooks on there just to keep them with a little bit of tension hanging down like that probably not necessary but anyways there you go that's one batch done I'm probably three quarters of the way across right now so I'll tell you when I get to um, finishing this and start slaying the reed. More later. Bye bye for now. YouTubers, I'm uh, slaying the reed now, as you can probably guess. Although, there's my neat little um, slaying hook, and we're doing it um, two threads per dent in a ten dent reed. That's ten dents per inch. So, this process doesn't take too long. But it is just one of those things you got to do. And we'll get through it. And see, I get. Uh, couple threads on my hand and just reach through, grab and pull them out. So I'm going to finish this up and then um, Go back to the computer and verify that I've got the treadles to retie because after having rearranged the, um, the shafts means I'm going to have to retie my treadles. Not a problem. Well, that's enough. I gotta. An inch worth. So let's take this back, just make sure they're nicely straightened out. Tie a knot. And there we are. Like I said, I'm going to go back to. Well, let's move you. I'm going to go to the computer, figure out what I need for 
treadle tie up get that reset I'm not going to take you under down there and uh, have you watch me do that because it's difficult enough for me to get down and work on my side like that um, and I don't want to have you suffer being on the floor with me and I think I'll pretty much end this video now um, We'll do, I'll do more when I actually get to weaving on this project, but I think this is enough for now. You'll see more in a week or two when I actually get to doing some weaving. But um, there you go. I've, you've seen me um, threading the heddles and slaying the reed on this um, color and weave huck. Gamp, and uh, I think it's going to be an interesting project. But with one like this, I hit, I I'm never sure how it's going to turn out. Um, I have high hopes, but I'm never real sure in advance. So that's enough for now. Uh, we'll catch you the next time around on YouTube. Bye bye.